It's holiday season, and we're getting. Actually, ge this probably won't go up until 2020. Well, you know what? Forget it. I don't even care. I'm still gonna talk about graphics card shopping. I mean, you still got Christmas money, right? Good. Here's what to blow it on. After you blow a little bit of it on our sponsor, Glassware. Instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device with Glassware. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link below. Like our other buyer's guides, all of our candidates need to be available new. The used market is just too volatile to make specific recommendations, although, I will say that if you're savvy, used hardware is a great option for value seekers. So we're looking at the regular retail price or the typical sale price for items that seem to be always on promo. And while we will have recommendations for specific cards linked in the video description below, don't feel like you can't branch out if a faster card has a bigger discount for whatever reason. Now, unique to our GPU buyer's guide is that we will not be looking at anything below $100. We have shown time and time again that these cards are a terrible value for gaming. So either save up a little bit longer or just go full bargain basement and pick up something like this if you just need an output for a secondary monitor. Oh yeah, guys, get subbed so you don't miss our upcoming video on cheap graphics cards off wish.com. This time we're gonna buy a bunch of them and just see what we get. At the lower end of the $100 to $150 range, you can expect Radeon RX 500 series cards to drop in price as the newer RX 5500 series nudges them off of store shelves. I'd say keep an eye on them for deals, but that's kind of a foggy future forecast. So the recommendation for today is the GTX 1650 Super. It's on the pricier side, but for roughly the same cost as the GTX 1650, you pick up the excellent Turing NVENC encoder, which for me anyway, is the killer app for Nvidia right now and totally worth that little bit extra. Moving up to 200 to 250 bucks, the choice is pretty clear. The Radeon RX 5500 XT just doesn't have what it takes to compete at this price bracket, with its performance being mostly comparable to the GTX 1650 Super from the previous one. So I guess that means the GTX 1660 Super wins by default. We actually found in our testing that the faster GDDR6 on the new Super card really helps it push closer to its TI counterpart, while it's also equipped with the Turing NVENC encoder for recording gameplay and streaming, unlike its older Radeon competition. At $300 to $350, Anthony and I were kinda split. On the one hand, the RTX 2060 provides full RTX and DLSS support, along with that Turing NVENC encoder I've gushed so much about. But on the other hand, the AMD Radeon RX 5700 is a better performer for the price out of the box with extra performance that can be unlocked with a BIOS upgrade or soft PowerPlay tables mod. So with that in mind, we're gonna go with a dual recommendation of either card for different use cases. Want the best possible performance and not afraid to tinker? Grab an RX 5700, you're gonna love it. Want good performance and a more robust feature set? Get the RTX 2060. You're not gonna be disappointed with either card, unless of course you are, in which case I am currently accepting complaints via the special handling instructions field on orders at lttstore.com. As we hit the 400 to $450 mark, we're once again faced with a no contest decision. Team Green seems to be taking the stance that, well, if you've got $450, you must also have another $100, and they have nothing but tweaked out 2060s in this range, which already weren't competitive with the performance of the non-XT5700. So I guess that means the RX 5700 XT wins by default, unless you do have another 100 bucks. At $500 to $550, the RTX 2070 Super comes into play and does it hard. With performance that's more in line with the RTX 2080 than its 2070 cousin, this card wins more often than it loses against the RX 5700 XT while maintaining the NVIDIA exclusive features. RTX Minecraft, anyone? as well as the hardware encoder that has made Turing so attractive to streamers. In the 600 to 650 category, you can still find an RTX 2080 non-super if you really want to. It'll be about as fast as a GTX 1080 Ti, but with all that RTX goodness, 
but for how much you're paying over the 2070 Super, we just don't think it makes any sense. Save your pennies. Not that I'd strongly recommend getting the RTX 2080 Super either at the uh, 700 to $750 range. I mean, it's not that it's a bad card, it's just that you're not getting that much more for your money unless you really need that extra kick from the faster memory for 1440p or 4K gaming. So I'll leave the value prop for this one up to you guys because I mean, at least you could make worse choices here like picking up a Radeon 7. <clears throat> now, unlike the rest of the lineup so far, RTX 2080 Ti territory abruptly starts a good $200 higher with nothing in the price gap in between. These GPUs cost as much as an entire decent gaming system and they've got no competition to speak of. So if you're looking for the best of the best, you've only got one choice and you better be ready to pay. Now you could make an argument for a dual RTX 2070 super setup, but scaling is unreliable and SLI support is only getting rarer in games these days. The only reason I'm even mentioning it is because of Nvidia's new experimental checkerboard rendering method that scales with almost any title with reduced micro stuttering. The big keyword there though is experimental and it not only requires a hacky way of enabling it, but it may not work on every title yet either. So until CFR is stable, the single 2080 Ti is the sole recommendation we can make at the top end. Well, okay, I guess there's the Titan, but if you're spending that kind of money, you already knew exactly what you wanted anyway. And hopefully now, so does everyone else, regardless of budget. 2019 wasn't as much of a banner year for GPUs as it was for CPUs, but AMD's renewed competition with Navi pushed pricing down for the masses so everyone can enjoy higher performance than they otherwise could have afforded. Here's hoping for more of the same and maybe a few twists and turns for 2020, which of course, by the time you're watching this, it probably already is. What won't give you more twists and turns is our segues. They're pretty direct. Squarespace! If you need a website, Squarespace is the place to go. And it's easy to make one for almost anything with Squarespace. They have award-winning templates that'll help you make your website stand out instead of looking like it's from the 90s. So if you're looking to open a business online selling products, Squarespace has you covered. They can help you showcase what you're selling in a modern style. They've got built-in inventory management. There's no limit to how many items you wanna sell. And even we use Squarespace. Both our Linus Media Group.com and LTX Expo websites were built quickly using Squarespace. And if you ever get stuck, they have 24 seven support ready to help you via live chat and email. So head to squarespace.com slash LTT to get 10% off today. So thanks for watching guys. If you're wondering what to pair your new GPU with, maybe go check out our late 2019 CPU buyer's guide. We're gonna have that linked for you below. Bye.